a habit at the minute of starting videos in some very unique, interesting places. You'll find me inside the Abt Dino, which is the most impressive dino that I have ever seen. The setup here is unbelievable. You should see the extractor fans and the, the induction of this in environment. It really is a next level dino. So we're gonna do a few runs, find out what this thing is pushing out after it's certified remap and then we're going to drive the real RS5R on the road to see what it's all about. I'm here with this new gentleman who I've only just met who is about to hit it on the throttle and give us a reading up front as to the legitimate power that the Abt RS5R is really pushing out. Hit it maestro. Here we go. I've never been in a car on a rolling road and directly in front of us you'll see the real-time readout that the Abt Dino is giving us. Now this is currently running the uh, the Abt RS5R power upgrade, so we should be looking at around about. <laughs> what's getting up there? We should be looking at around about 530 PS, which is essentially around 530 horsepower. The significance of this place is that this is where the final testing and development is done on all of the Abt. ECUs, and this is where you get the proper readings. There's things like airflow, which is super important to get a true reading on a dyno like this. Check out this massive, basically this vent here is channeling a huge amount of air directly into the air intake of the RS5, trying to simulate uh, exactly what the airflow would look like. It's, you know, over 200 kilometers an hour. Okay, so there you can see the result of exactly uh, of the measurement from exactly that car. The final result is uh, the 534.6 horsepower. The 405.4 horsepower is exactly that power we're having on the wheel. P Schlepp, in German, that is the 120.1 horsepower is exactly that power you're losing between the engine up to the wheel, including the dyno. And together with these two figures, your, the result is P mod, which is 525.5 horsepower, and from P mod up to P norm, that's a calculation with all the uh, all the given factors, the the air pressure, the air temperature, and all and all these figures. And with these figures, the calculation from P mod is to P norm, and P norm is the final result of the of the measurement. And that car is with exactly 534.6 horsepower. machine that I've just found myself in but before we start talking about that and this amazing road that I conveniently find myself on um, do you remember and if you've been following my journey recently that I've had my Audi S1 Quattro tuned <laughs> by the wonderful blokes that go by the name of Richter Sport they are the official UK distributor of Abt and the wonderful gentleman that goes by the name of Neil that I was speaking about, who helped me out with that tune, said, do you know what, why don't you come over with me to Germany, to Abd HQ, and drive some of their special toys. And here we are in the brand new RS5R. Now, as far as I'm aware, I think I'm the first person outside of Abd to have actually driven this car. So this might inadvertently be a strange sort of exclusive. Anyway, um, I like to set a bit of context because in the UK certainly, tuning can often be dismissed as somewhat of a gimmick. The kind of thing where you're merely slapping on a body kit and calling it faster. Well, that's why I really wanted to start this video within the 12 million euro dyno that we started in earlier. That setup, as you've seen, is incredible. Um, the amount of engineering that went into the dyno alone to ensure that the tuning readings were accurate and true is unbelievable. Uh, just by the amount of airflow that has to hit the front of this car uh, when it's on that rolling road to try and simulate as best as possible what it's like to be traveling at 200 kilometers an hour. Uh, the fact that the uh, rolling road is allowing them to use just one roller per set of wheels rather than two, which 
reduces friction. All of these things add up to a much more accurate reading. And the reason I give that context and talk about how expensive it is, is that ABD must be approached first and foremost as an engineering firm. They are 120 years old, right? I know, I mean, even for me, I've, I've been involved in the car game for quite some time. And while I'm familiar with the name ABD and I've seen them throughout racing, I didn't know they were 120 years old. And so the tradition of ABD is actually steeped in racing history. They worked their way up through German touring cars and became an official race partner of Audi themselves. So when I say ABD is to be approached as an engineering firm first, it really would be doing them a disrespect to think of them otherwise. So as a result of years of fettling and finding out how far they can push Audis. We are now in the, the turbo generation of these cars. We're in their latest version, the RS5, and Abt have turned it into the RS5R. So what does the R give you? Well, we'll talk about the styling shortly, but really it's all about what these guys have done with the engine. The standard RS5, which I recently drove around track in Barcelona with Audi, is 444 brake horsepower, exactly. Now, the tuning work that Abt have done have taken this car up to around 530 horsepower. I mean, this isn't so much as a tune, this thing feels like a different engine. It's crackers. And to go with that wonderful advantage of horsepower, there is, of course, particularly with the benefit of the turbos, this lovely enhancement of torque, which has taken it from the standard 443 pounds-feet of torque all the way up to 509. I mean, this thing hasn't so much evolved as it has swelled out with power and performance. Of course, with extra power and torque comes other modifications. You can't just go, here's more power, deal with it. It's come with it, abd anti-roll bars, adjustable suspension, and of course, the delightful exhaust upgrade. Now what's nice about this, and which is why the subtle management of exhaust sound indicates to me the mindset of ABD, because it doesn't shout at you. It's not a barky, look at me, I've tuned my car exhaust that is shouting in your face. It's still evidently there, as you can hear. Let's just drop it down a car. Here you go, look. <laughs> yes, it's still very much there, but because this is an engineering first car, not a shouty look at me tuners car, it's done with refinement and respect to those around you and particularly your neighbours upon a cold start. So what's it like? Well, conveniently, I find myself on a tight, twisty German mountain road approaching a ski resort by the name that I cannot pronounce, and we'll find out exactly what this thing is like right now. I mean, this road is absolutely perfect. It's about half an hour away from Abt. And as I'm sure you can tell, tight, twisty switchbacks. This RS4, wow. Okay, the first thing before I go on and talk about how this thing handles, the engine characteristics. Do you know what? Oh, the low, the low to mid-end torque is where it's really showing. Out of these corners, of course, we've maintained Quattro all-wheel drive, out of these corners, what on, you can really, I mean, we're flat on the floor in second coming out of these tight, tight hairpins. It's a wet road as well, wet and cold, may I add. And despite the fact that it has all of that additional power and torque, it's really, you can feel it compressing you, compressing you back in the, the seat. It's lovely. I think the number one characteristic and the immediate trait that hits you is how immediate the low down inertia builds. The throttle response is quicker, but the torque picks up wonderfully. It's thick, it kind of throws itself at you, and before you know it, you flung yourself out of the apex with just a degree of waft that simply wasn't there from the standard car. <laughs> yeah, it's lovely. Now, one thing I noticed on the RS5 when I drove it a few months ago was that while they handled very well, there was evident body roll. Because of course, first and foremost, this isn't exactly a performance car. It's more of a sort of fast, practical car, really. One of the immediate things I notice on this is how flat it rides. Now, earlier on, I was mentioning 
the evolution and, and the enhancements that Abd have put into the suspension and the anti-roll bars. Anti-roll indeed, it rides really flat. Like considering how tight as well and how quickly I'm throwing it around these corners, it is managing its weight really well. But of course, at heart, it's still an RS5. So while you still have this newfound power and glorious torque, you're inside and you're driving along in the refinement that we're so used to from luxury Audis like this. Now talking about the interior, the changes aren't just on the engine, it's on the exterior styling and aero packs and also the interior styling. There is a heavy smattering of carbon fiber options. Um, one thing that I'm not too sure on is the addition of the extended carbon paddles here. Now, don't get me wrong, ultimately for the interaction, it is much better than the small flappy paddle sort of buttons on the back of the wheel. But the idea of extended paddles is that you can find them easier and use them on their extremities. And if you try to shift at the bottom of them here, it doesn't, doesn't always work until you apply your finger just a little bit further up. However, I can't get around the fact that they do kind of just look a little bit stuck on. That being said, you'd still tick the box. Now, of course, with Abt being a sort of luxury tuning company, the RS5R is in fact made in limited quantity. And when I say limited quantity, I mean very limited quantity. They're only making 50 of these cars worldwide. And yes, of course, I believe almost all of them are sold out, <laughs> which I can imagine. The testament to the strength of this brand is the fact that, as I mentioned, I'm one of the first people to drive this car, so not many people know just how good it is, and yet it's already almost sold out. Neil from Richter Sport in the UK was saying that when the pictures of this car hit their Instagram, he said the phone was going nuts. And you only have to look at this thing, and I understand why. If you're familiar with living with fast Audis, and you want something just a little bit more, a little bit spicier, there's kind of nowhere else to go. Ab seems to be doing this better than anyone else right now. So exterior styling. Now typically, when we set up from Ab to earlier, it was a beautiful sunny day, despite the fact that I am surrounded by snow, which I can't seem to escape right now, but it does make the environment look beautiful. This green, this Sonoma green, I'm not sure if you watched my video when I had the first drive of the new RS4, which by the way, apt to do an RS4R, which looks amazing. Um, Sidetracked, the Sonoma green, if it wasn't for the fact that I lived in England and 90% of the time it's just this sort of flat gray hue in the sky, I would spec my next Audi in Sonoma green. When the sun comes out, it is gorgeous. It has this beautiful, almost goldy, metallic fleck within this green paint. Shows up the contours of the cars beautifully. It's very, very cool. And of course, the fun doesn't stop there. On the outside, we also have the carbon continuing with the aero styling pack. And of course, Abt being the engineering company that I was referring to, this again isn't purely for aesthetics, even though it does enhance the look of this car to no end. Um, the car that we had in the dyno earlier was a standard RS5, and I've been walking around these cars for the last few hours, and it made that car look so normal. So, exterior carbon pack, rear diffuser, front splitter, of these wonderful uh, carbon canards on the front left and right of the grille, and it just gives this thing a whole new squat to it. It just looks lot meaner but what's interesting about it is it doesn't look like it's been augmented it just looks how you think an RS product should look just mean and grunty but of course what kind of person would I be if I didn't finish this video on the Autobahn <laughs> So needless to say, this thing has been wonderfully fettled. I think the overriding thing is just the tweaks are greater than the sum of its parts. It's a lovely environment to sit in as a result of the subtle augmentations inside that's had this sort of quality lift, but it's the torque and the overall enhancement of performance that has really made this thing feel in the territory of a proper RS product. As always guys, thanks for watching. I shall see you next time. <laughs> Ciao. Oh, we're back up to 
Tilted already. 